Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 114 of the Listening Time Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope that you're doing great today. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a topic that I read about in a book recently. Uh, I actually listened to this book. It was an audiobook. Um, it's a book called Never Split the Difference. It's a really interesting book. It's about negotiation. And recently in one of the advanced episodes that I recorded, I talked a little bit about negotiating at garage sales. And it got me thinking about this topic. And I remembered this book that I read uh, about a month ago. And I thought, hmm, I want to talk a little bit about negotiation, about some different situations in which we might negotiate in the U.S., and uh, some tips about um, how to negotiate, tips that I learned from this book, uh, Never Split the Difference. I think it'll be good for me to uh, talk about a few of those tips today so that I don't forget them. <laughs> it's always good to teach something after you learn it. It kind of stays in your mind for longer afterwards. It kind of solidifies it in your mind. In English, when we say that something is solidified, we're saying that it becomes more stable, more concrete. It's not gonna disappear, for example. So I'm gonna talk about that today. I think that'll be interesting. And remember that if you're interested in practicing with real English, English that is spoken fast, if you want that type of practice, then make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time family member and you'll receive my advanced podcast episodes where I speak at normal speed. But of course, I provide the transcript for you. So if you're interested in practicing with that, make sure to sign up. The link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, you can also check out my ebook, my collection of three short mystery stories written in English and translated into Spanish and into Portuguese. So if you want to practice reading fiction in English, that will be a great resource for you. The links are in the description as well. And of course, you have the transcript down there. So click on that if you need it. And before we start, remember that it really helps me out if you share this podcast with anyone you know who's learning English. I'd really appreciate that. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about negotiation. So this book that I read, Never Split the Difference, uh, is a book that was written by uh, a man who used to be um, one of the FBI's top hostage crisis negotiators. So what that means is that whenever uh, there was a situation um, where some person took another person hostage. That means that a person either kidnapped a person or they uh, were robbing a bank and they uh, didn't allow uh, one of the workers to leave and they kept them there with them while they were robbing the bank or something like that. Those are situations uh, when someone uh, takes another person hostage. That's what that word means. So whenever there was a situation like that, um, this man who wrote this book, 
um, uh, might have been called to negotiate with the bad guy who took the hostage to try to get the hostage uh, set free. In English, we can use the phrase set free to mean that you liberate or allow something or someone to be free, right? If you set the hostage free, that means you let them go. So that was his job. And so he was and still is one of the world's greatest negotiators. And so in this book, he talks about uh, how to negotiate, how to always or almost always get what you want. And it's a really interesting read. I would highly recommend it. And so I'll talk a little bit about some of the tips that he gives. But first, I want to just talk about situations in which you might negotiate um, situations involving money, because in reality, a lot of our interactions are negotiations. When we talk to our kids, when we talk to our spouse. So obviously there are many situations in which we negotiate, but I wanted to talk about some situations that involve money because in the advanced episode that I recorded recently where I talk about negotiating at garage sales, I mentioned that there aren't that many situations in which we negotiate in the U.S. Um, involving money. However, I was able to think of a few uh, after that episode, so I want to talk a little bit about those. The first situation is if you are at some street market or there is some informal vendor. So this isn't common in the U.S. Uh, this is not something that we have a lot of. We don't have all these uh, different weekly street markets or nightly street markets like uh, there might be in some other countries. In the U.S., this is much less common, so we don't come across this situation that often. In English, when we say that you come across a situation, this means that you experience a situation. So we don't come across this situation that much, but there are some times where there might be an informal a uh, situation where someone is selling something and for example like a garage sale like i already mentioned that's a situation where you can actually try to get a lower price for an item that you want to buy so we can definitely negotiate at garage sales or maybe at some other informal places where we're buying something. Before we continue with the episode, let me tell you about our sponsor, Sleep Number. Sleep Number smart beds give you an individualized sleep experience, which makes getting high quality sleep effortless every night. Sleep Number smart beds have adjustable firmness on each side, so couples can choose their own ideal firmness, how much comfort and support is on each side of the bed, so it's perfect for both of you. Sleep Number smart beds also help keep you asleep because they automatically respond to your movements throughout the night, and so they adjust to every move so you're both comfortable. These beds also show you the quality of the sleep that you're getting. They learn how you sleep, and they provide you personalized insights to help you learn to sleep even better. Science shows that quality sleep helps improve your mental, emotional, physical, and relationship health. So if you're waking up tired, here are some tips to help you sleep your best. If you have some tough workouts, then the Sleep Number Smart Bed can help you get the quality sleep you need to recover from those workouts and perform at your best because these beds contour to your neck, shoulders, back, and hips, and so they provide you the support that you need, and there's even weight distribution for more comfortable sleep. 
And if you're feeling hot this summer, sleep experts recommend keeping your bedroom temperature at 65 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit for comfortable sleep. You can use your air conditioner or fan with your temperature balancing sleep number smart bed and bedding to help both of you keep cool and sleep just right. And do you and your partner disagree on comfort? That's pretty normal because 8 out of 10 couples prefer a different mattress firmness than their partner. But don't worry because Sleep Number Smart Beds let you choose your ideal firmness on each side of the bed and they automatically respond to your individual movements throughout the night to keep you both sleeping comfortably. My sleep number is 35 and my wife's is 40. But that's not a problem because each side of the Sleep Number Smart Bed can be personalized for our own individual preferences. And let me mention one other benefit of getting quality sleep, which is mental well-being. As a language learner, getting quality sleep is essential for my mental focus, so I need to get a good night's sleep. I'm sure you agree with me that sleeping well allows you to focus better when you're doing your language learning, and a Sleep Number Smart Bed can help you get that quality sleep. Sleep next level and unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now, don't miss Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year, where all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number limited edition smart bed, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com. See store for details. Another situation in which we might negotiate. Um, I don't know about in the U.S., Maybe, but I'm thinking that it's possible uh, because I've done this in other places like in Mexico, and that is taxi rides. I'm not 100% sure if you can negotiate um, a taxi ride in the U.S., but you can definitely do this in other countries, and who knows, maybe people do this in the U.S., but I have like zero experience uh, taking taxis in the U.S., so I don't want to <laughs> say something that's not true. Maybe uh, this is impossible, but I'm thinking that um, it might be possible in certain situations. Maybe before you get in the taxi, you might be able to negotiate the price uh, to get to your destination so that the taxi driver doesn't just use um, the little tool, the meter that he has to track the amount of miles driven or whatever. Because there's that way of charging you uh, when you ride in a taxi. Or maybe they can just skip that whole thing and just charge you a price uh, that you determine beforehand. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing that this happens sometimes. Um, I've negotiated uh, taxi prices in Mexico before, and this can be tricky. Uh, I've had a couple bad experiences with this, actually. I remember one time we uh, agreed on a price before I got in the car, and then once I got in the car, then he uh, kind of changed the price on me. Uh, he said, oh, you heard me that it's 300, right? When I thought it was 200. And I said, what? We said 200. And he said, no, 300. But I was already in the taxi sitting down and we were about to go. And I just allowed myself to get scammed like that. In English, when we say that someone scams you, this means that they uh, deceive you to get your money. So another way of saying this is that uh, the taxi driver ripped me off. <laughs> he uh, was able to get more money out of me than he should have. But I just allowed it to happen, and I said, okay, 300, and then we left. So it can be tricky if you're dealing with someone, uh, a taxi driver who wants to rip you off, or they think you're a tourist, 
uh, it can be tricky to negotiate uh, with taxi drivers. Uh, another situation in which people might negotiate in the US is buying a car. So I've never done this at a car dealership. Um, this is the place where they sell cars. This is a dealership. I've never done this before. I've never bought a car at a dealership. Um, but for example, you can do it there or you could do it um, when you're just buying a used car from a private seller. You might negotiate the price. Um, so I had to negotiate as a seller uh, recently, uh, last year, we bought a car, which we negotiated a little bit um, from the private seller. Uh, and then the car actually turned out to have many problems. And so we decided to sell it. And we had to negotiate the price with different potential buyers. And that was really stressful because none of these potential buyers wanted to pay anywhere near the amount that I wanted for the car. And they were trying to negotiate the price down very low. And this happened multiple times. And then I realized that this car was not going to sell for a lot. I had to uh, lower the price and give in to this negotiation. In English, when we say that you give in to something or someone, we're saying that you surrender to it. So I kind of had to surrender to <laughs> this negotiation a little bit and I sold the car for cheap. Another time when you might negotiate in the U.S. is with your salary. If you are interviewing for a job, of course, uh, you might have the chance to negotiate your salary with the interviewer. And if you want a raise when you already have a job, you might be able to negotiate a raise as well. That's pretty common. And then, of course, you can also negotiate big business deals. Maybe you have a job where you have to um, sell or buy or uh, come to an agreement uh, with another party, and uh, you have to do this as your job. By the way, we can use the word party to talk about um, a person or people involved in some business deal or something like that. So the other party refers to the other person or the other people. So you might have to negotiate big business deals. Uh, for example, sports agents need to negotiate these big contracts for their clients who are uh, these athletes. So they have to negotiate and try to get the best contract for uh, the soccer player or the basketball player or whoever their client is. So uh, you might not be a sports agent, but maybe you have to negotiate big deals uh, with uh, other companies or businessmen or whoever it may be. So there is a lot of negotiation in different businesses. That's something that many people have to do. All right, now I want to talk about a few tips that uh, the author of this book gives uh, regarding negotiation. So one of his best tips is that people want to feel understood. That's one of our primary desires. We want to feel that the other person understands us. They're listening to us. 
they're considering our feelings, our opinion, they're actually listening to what we're saying. And he talks about the fact that if you can get the other party to feel understood and feel like you're really listening to them and you empathize with them, it will be much more likely that you'll reach a deal with them. And not only that, but they'll also feel happy about this deal. They'll feel satisfied with the deal that you've made because you made them feel understood. You built that empathy, that connection with them. And once they feel that, it's much easier to actually get them to um, agree to what you want, really. Um, and they'll feel uh, much better about that. So uh, he talks about being genuinely empathetic and understanding of them to focus the conversation on them and what they have to say and not just what you have to say. A lot of times in negotiations, we focus on everything that we want, right? And that's not a good strategy. You should uh, allow the other people to do a lot of the talking and you should listen and allow them to feel understood and uh, to show them that uh, you really care about them and their feelings and their ideas. So that's a really good tip that he gives. Another tip that he gives that is very counterintuitive, meaning that it goes against what we normally think, is that you shouldn't try to get them to say yes uh, too soon and try to get them to uh, just say yes and agree with everything that you're saying. There are a lot of salespeople nowadays that use this tactic. They try to get you to say yes to many things in the conversation so that you will eventually say yes to their final proposition. So they'll start the conversation uh, by saying, uh, do you appreciate drinking clean water? And of course, everybody says yes to that. Everybody likes clean water. But when someone comes up to us on the street and they start with that question, we immediately feel negative. Even though we say yes, we immediately feel like this person is going to try to sell us something that we don't want. And then they're going to ask a lot of other questions uh, that get us to say yes, 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 until eventually they say, well, great, we have this perfect product for you. Since you like all of this, here it is. Do you want to buy it? Right. We already know what's going to happen. So we aren't enthusiastic about saying yes in these situations. And we don't feel good about someone just trying to get us to say yes and force the yes out of us. So he talks about getting people to actually say no. Uh, towards the beginning of the conversation. Ask them things uh, that allow them to actually say no. Um, of course, you eventually want them to say yes at the end, but it's better to go for the no earlier on. And when they say no, it makes them feel more comfortable and it makes them feel like they are in power and they have autonomy and it allows them to uh, actually start to have a real conversation with you and not just one of these fake exchanges like I just uh, mentioned, right? They'll actually start to think 
clearly about what you're saying after you've given them the power to say no early on. It's strange, I know. It's counterintuitive, but studies show that when the person is able to say no to things earlier in the negotiation, it allows them to eventually work towards a real authentic yes at the end. So I know that sounds a little weird, but uh, I think that it's a very interesting insight, a very interesting tip that he gives. So I recommend uh, that you uh, read more about that in his book or somewhere else. And one other tip that he gives is mirroring. Uh, this refers to repeating the last words or the most important two or three words that the person says. So uh, if they say, ah, we've been dealing with a lot of problems, instead of saying, oh, really? What you can say is a lot of problems. So you repeat their uh, final words or the most important few words, and it allows them to talk uh, more and to feel more of a connection with you. When you mirror them, it actually makes them feel more connected. When you repeat their words, they feel this bond or connection with you. It's pretty interesting. So if you get into the habit of doing this, you'll allow them to talk more about their problems, feel understood, like I mentioned before, feel like you're listening to them, feel like you're connecting with them, all because you repeated their last few words, all because you turned their last couple words into a question. It's really interesting. Uh, it doesn't sound like a really big thing that you do, but he talks about how effective it is. It really helps establish this connection. So uh, those are a few tips that he gives. He gives many more tips. Uh, I recommend this book. Uh, it's really interesting. It will help you see negotiation in a different way. So check that out. Uh, I highly recommend it. All right, we're going to stop there for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember that you can become a Listening Time family member to get my advanced podcast episodes where I speak fast. So if you need to practice with real English, then make sure to sign up. And if you are a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, make sure to check out my ebook if you want to read fiction in English. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time.